it's going to look like a nice rendition of a dragon as described as being a ruby gem dragon. And all in all, I think I'm going to be really pleased. Um, I'm going to go ahead uh, and let it dry here a little bit, and then we'll do a little ground cover work. I want to say I hate you to a couple of the people who kept saying, well, why don't you do this and do that on the, on the, on the terrain board? And normally all I was going to do was put a piece of grass on it. And, uh, and that's how I normally, uh, I do base, I do bases. I just throw some grass. Maybe if it's a larger base, I put a little rock effect like I'm doing right here, which is just essentially you paint it, dry brush it, just like I did the dragon, then give it a dark ink wash and it looks like a little pile of rock. But some people are saying, oh, wow, how about we do these gems and broken crystals and mirror bits and, and treasure chests? And I'm like, Rrr. now I've done that before on figures. I have a dragon miniature that I used to my Warhammer fantasy army and it has a dead bodies underneath it which was really cool so what i dug out here is this was something my grandmother had she has this like white glitter which looks like little gems and she has this gold glitter which looks like little gold coin pieces so i'm going to toss them on the base a little bit when i put in the grass and some some other rock and dirt and stuff and, and you'll see that in a little while um but i'm only doing that because they're making me now the other thing i'm going to do as an homage to my friend Steve, is more than likely about 40 years ago, I don't know if you can see it, he painted this little chest. And it's been used, I cannot imagine how many times in Dungeons & Dragons Adventures. So I'm going to place it right here by this little pile of rock with some little coins and gems around it, as if somehow it's just one of the minor little things the dragon has to have to keep you from stealing. So I guess he'll get to ride on into the future, which I always like. We'll let it dry. We'll come back with the grass and go from there. Be back in a second. Well, it looks like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel in my monochromatic ruby dragon here. So we're going to do a little of the base work. I wanted to show you that. Now, a lot of times in a speed paint, I usually just paint the base black because that's if it's in a competition, I don't go to all the craziness because they're judging the miniature, not the base. But I'm going to go ahead and do this because, of course, this is an actual working figure. Now. I might have made a really super elaborate if I wasn't going to speed paint, but of course, as I've been telling you, I'm trying to keep this, do it fast, get it done. So I've gone ahead and added just a little bit, the rock, which I dry brushed and washed, and then dry brushed a little bit more. I dropped in a little chest from Steve, and then I'm gonna show you some of the ground cover situations and materials I use. Now, a lot of people say to use white glue to glue stuff down, and I don't. Um, I might occasionally wear something I really don't want it to move, and I use it, of course, uh, for um, gluing down stones and things like that. But a lot of times when I'm just doing ground cover, I just use dirt. I basically get a brown paint that is a kind of dirt color, and I just paint it on and then let the flocking material lay on the dirt, and it holds it into place. Now, a lot of people think that, well, that's not going to work. You know, it's going to eventually dry out and fall off. Well, I've been doing it for 40 years, and I have figures that still have their ground cover on them 40 years later. And I find that over time... Um, you know, dust and everything else tends to eventually tear up your ground cover anyway. It's the part of the miniature that usually fails the, the soonest because, you know, it's usually like a railroad product or something. So what I'm going to do here is a little departure from my speed paint and throw some faux coins on here before I put on the grass and foliage. So I just throw down the, the dirt colored stuff. Woo! And then I sprinkle fairy dust. And what I guess is going to amount to being gems Whee! that look like little stones. Now, there are a lot cooler products out there that make all kinds of really sort of semi-realistic. And, and some of them I've used. But mostly I find that the best thing to do is just use this little, for speed paint, little sparkle bits. And they stick. And they stick well enough that, you know, they're going to be on there for a period of time. So what I now have on our, our Ruby Dragon, which which took me a horrendous amount of time, is a little bit of treasure. Just barely showing. Why he cares, I have no idea, but they're dragons, and so they like treasure because, what the hell, they got to collect something and nobody will let them paint miniatures. So now the rest of the thing is I start working on the grass, which is going to be the standard ground cover. Now I'm also going to use a product that Michael Mordor clued me into, and if you don't know who he is, he is on YouTube, Michael under slash Mordor, and he's got a Patreon, which I believe is also Michael under slash Mordor, you know, yeah, Patreon. 
and he is a professional miniature painter. He makes his living up in Scotland, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, eating haggis and other horrible things, and painting miniatures. And I found him, and I started looking at his stuff, and it's nice, and it was incredibly cheap. So I told people, you should support this guy, because, I mean, he's going to eventually have a stroke and a heart attack and fall over, because he's charging way too little and painting way too much. But he seems to really love it, and he turned me on to this. So if you get your dragons, I don't know if he has any sites left, but I think he'll paint professionally. I keep thinking, and I, gee, I should have maybe talked to this him about this before I mentioned it. But you should contact him and say, hey, would you make us a deal to paint like dragons? Because I think currently, right now, he's painting a few dragons for one of his Patreons. So... It's something that I know he likes to do. He loves to paint. Mostly Reaper. I don't know whether he'll come out of the closet to paint um, one of Matt's figures, but he might, and I bet he would. You know, I mean, I'm going to more than likely, on my Patreon page, eventually start quickly as my Albion Twilight of Fey game gets going. I'm going to more likely also commission him uh, on one of his Patreon bits because he said he'll open one up for me. And uh, I'll let him start producing lots of fae and elves and stuff like that because I can't produce everything. I'm, and um, I like his stuff, and I would like to see him get more notoriety. And plus, he's Scottish, and oh, that's always very cool to me since I have Scottish ancestry. Um, and he seems to really love the hobby, and I like people who love the hobby. So going back to where we had done this before, where the treasure is... I've laid in a section of brown paint. Now, I normally do this, like I say, as fast as I can because you want to keep it wet. Then I have sort of a medium that I have accumulated over the time, and it's essentially railroad grass and other doohickeys. Static grass, which is kind of my favorite, um, though I think my static grass is getting a little thin in this batch. And then you just essentially take your figure and dip it in and let the paint grab the material it wants and knock off the extra. Anybody seen this? Yeah. And then you give it a little blow to blow off any of the excess. And what you now see, if I can get my hand, big fat hands, you've got your rock, you've got your chest. There's little some sparkly gems, but they're covered by grass and stuff. And the grass goes around to the front, and you can sort of see that we now have the figure sort of sitting in base. Now, I've done about a little more than a third of the base color on that figure right now. And you can see that I just spent a couple of minutes doing this. It's very fast. It's very easy. Um, if I hadn't put that trest and, and, uh, and coins on there, I likely would already be done. But, you know, hey, I, I can be conned into doing almost anything. I'm a sucker for the hobby. So, so now all we do is we just finish up um, and go into the middle. Put some brown paint in here. Same thing is going to apply. Uh, consistency, I, I don't normally thin this paint down. You want it to be kind of as, you know, sort of thick. The thicker paint grabs onto more stuff, thus it'll hold on longer. Um, it eventually sort of falls off at some point as you have it over the decades. So once you have no hair like me and you're, you're getting much older, you'll notice that some of your, your ground flock covers. I imagine I have 40 plus old miniatures that have like, you know, nine pieces of static grass on a brown base. But they have seen decades and decades and decades and decades of action and have done a good job for me. So I'm plenty happy to go back and reflock them. I would love to take advantage of all the technical stuff he's going to have to really make something nice so you guys could see how to paint. And not just, you know, like I said, pro paint, um, you know, Golden Demon stuff, not really my thing anymore. But just to get you so you can get lots and lots of really nice figures on the board and and ready to go so again the same thing you just get the old paint on there you, you bang it with the static grass you, you really do want to make sure the figure is sort of dry um before you do this because it's going to want to stick to everything because well it's static grass but again you can sort of see that the dragon has grass you know in the middle now and what i'll do is eventually take a when it dries the paint dries i'll take a soft i'll take a soft brush to it sorry guys I'll take a soft brush to it and sort of brush off areas where the static grass is determined that it wants to stick to the figure. So you know, get in here and stuff like that. And that's just that's just static. It's not uncommon. And you want to try to get as, as complete as you can or as complete as you feel comfortable with. You know, so I'll I'll now go around the edge because this figure actually extended out beyond the base in most places. So 
I would have liked to have had a bigger fig base. And, and like I said, it might have been a situation that if it was me doing it um, personally for one of my figures, I might have uh, I might have um, bought one of those really cool custom bases where they have rock and like ruined tower pieces and you can even add stuff. And then you could have put dead bodies amongst the um, amongst the dragon and stuff. And that's, and that's fun. I mean, it's just a matter of, again, all of it is one commodity only, and the commodity is time. It's not really talent. I know a lot of people, you know, want to feel, feel over, overwhelmed by this, and you really shouldn't. It's not that hard. And I think if you practice and just look at what I'm doing, um, this was not a lot of work for me. I mean, and it wouldn't be a lot of work for you once you guys have kind of understand what the what the particulars are. And I, I think I'm hopefully getting some of that to you. If you have more questions, you know, obviously direct them. You might want to get a hold of me too on my Twitter feed, which is Jim Murphy at game underscore Methuselah. Uh, Matt Coville's on Twitter a lot, so a lot of times you get he'll you get a better chance of getting a response from him on Twitter than you are if you try to get him any other way, because other than maybe he, I know he's on Reddit quite often, you know, and he obviously can tell you more about that himself, but he's so busy now, you know, with trying to get everything done here that it's very hard to hear from him at all. Hell, I never even see him. I'm, I'm just kind of bugging him a little bit, hoping to get up there and see his new place and see if I can talk him into having his tech people teach me some stuff about how to do the videos and like, so I can get a bit better. I think we're just about done here. Um, I'm I now I might continue on once I get a figure finished and do a little more after the fact if I find a gap or a space or a, um, something a misstroke or I want to experiment a little more. I might indeed do that. Though in this case, I don't think I'm going to. I mean, it's I wanted to get it done, and again, like I said, present it to you as if it was a table figure for me where I really needed it to get it out for say an upcoming game like tonight or tomorrow. Um, and I wanted this dragon to be ready. Well, it is. Um, I'm going to also shoot still pictures. I find that the still pictures have a lot better resolution of this figure, um, of any figures, than for some reason the video. And that's because I'm shooting at a fairly low um, level. And that's because, you know, I don't have a lot of upco. I initially did one of mine at high def early on, and I could not get the, the thing to unload. So I'm sort of talking to my provider about finding out what the costs are to do enhanced uploading. Um, but again, I, I think I'm going to try to pick Matt's brain and Matt's people's brains as soon as he has the time to 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 look at it and, and give me a little a little time. And then hopefully, like I said, shoot something at his studio where... Um, where his pros can sort of show me a lot of stuff. And I expect, you know, I, I learn reasonably quickly for an old dog. And I think I'll be able to get to a point where before he has to kick me to the street, I can I can learn all the secrets and be able to get you some better content than what we currently have. I, I know it's fine for conversation, but if we're really going to start getting into detailing of visuals on miniatures and things like this, I really need something a bit better. And hopefully we'll be able to get that going to you. So there we go. Um... The only thing that's going to happen now is in about an hour when all the paint is dry and the grass is set, I'm going to brush off all the excess that's there. I'm going to take a bunch of pictures of it and put it on my YouTube. Uh, you can check it out and the pictures will be up. If you have any questions, I might take it over to the Guild House this afternoon and show the guys over there. And if they want to put it on display, I might do that. If that happens... I'll let you know if you're in the you know Southern California area and you want to run by and see the Ruby Dragon before you get yours or just if you're really interested or whatever, this is a, a pretty good thing to do. And as I hoped I've showed you, even though this guy, like I said, is more monochromatic than I would have liked for this figure, I don't know what the actual brush time is. I mean, you know, a lot of time it's drying and stuff, but you can look at the minutes um, that I was actually working on the figure. You can maybe add another 10 or 15 minutes for things I might have done off camera, which really was not much. And you can get a fair idea of what the total time I would have spent in this. Now, assuming that I may be painting this with four or five other figures of like color, which is the way I do it, yes, I would more likely double the time, but when it was all said and done, I'd likely have six or seven finished figures all in a red and red-brown hue. Kind of the way I paint nowadays, but again, like I, I wanted you to sort of see the full effect of this. So, 
Um, I really just kind of spent time on that. And that way I had to study a lot of things. I had to play with this concept of the shard. I had to try to figure out ways to repair the red and get it back more to a brown hue, which I'm not sure I did, even though I think it looks a little bit more brown and a little better um, off the camera. But you'll see it. And if you get a chance to see it live, great. But look for this figure being done by some other pros down the road. When you get yours, you know, if you're, if you're not, I hope you're excited to paint it. And if you are um, and you have questions, please feel free to ask me. But in the meantime, I'm going to let you go. So fight me, devils, fight, for I hate peace. Game on.